next day I'm sitting at my house and I look out the window and I see Steven, my sister, and my parents walking up the steps. Oh. And I, I knew the jig was up. And yeah. they came in and said, you got two options. Yeah. Everything you see in front of you is either gone or you go pack a bag. We're going to go to detox, spend 90 days in rehab. Yeah. And the first question I have is, well, can I at least drink after this? Yeah. I'll stop doing the pills. And they're like, go pack your freaking bag. Yeah. Like, so I spent a week in detox. Um, and then I went to a treatment facility where I would unknowingly spend the next four months. Welcome to another edition of TM3 Impact. I am excited because today we have Liesl Shu, the author of Girl Dad, here today to talk about the process and just her life getting to this point to write this amazing book. Welcome, Liesl. Thank you so much for having me. I'm yes. really excited to be here today. Super excited to have you. So let's jump right in. Cliff Note version. Sure. Kind of tell me your San Antonio story. How did you come to live in the greater San Antonio area? Sure. So um, my both my parents are from San Antonio. They actually graduated from Churchill. Uh, my dad was part of the state champ, 76 state champ, Churchill Chargers. Oh, wow. Yeah, they think that's still pretty cool today. So um, I was born in Houston. We moved back to San Antonio when uh, I was little and okay. grew up here. Uh, graduated from Clark High School, went to Texas Tech, um, go, Raider, go, go Red, Red Raiders. Red Raiders, um, yes. And my husband and I are both from San Antonio after a few years, after college, we lived in Dallas, okay. came back to San Antonio, got married, and the rest is history. So there here you we go. Are. Yeah. So did you get, did you meet him in San Antonio or did you meet him at Texas Tech? So oddly enough, we both went to Clark. I'm two grades older. Oh. Um, so I like to joke and say like, yeah, you knew who I was. I was uh -huh. a senior when you were a sophomore. Oh, um, yeah. So we kind of knew who each, each other were, but um, I did that fun victory lap at tech, you know, okay. I was on the five-year plan, Yep. just kind of yep. squeezed, squeezed it out a little bit more. And, um, my sister was a freshman when I was in my fifth year Okay. and we kind of started, she was good friends with, uh, Steven, my husband and his buddies. And, um, we kind of just started hanging out and yes, the rest was history. Very so, cool. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah. I went to Wayland Baptist Okay. Which is just north of tech. Yes. So we would go, that's where we would go to quote unquote party because uh -huh. everything was in Lubbock. Lubbock. Yeah. Yep. That was a crazy place to go <laughs> because I was in Plainview, Texas at Wayland uh -huh. Baptist uh -huh. and the name said it all. Plainview. Yeah. There's not, no, there was nothing to I do. I know about Plainview. You know about Plainview. Yes. Okay. So now you get, you graduate, you sure. come back to San Antonio mm -hmm. and then what did you start doing once you got back from to San Antonio? So we started planning a wedding. Um, yeah. Obviously, I had kind of put together a little PR consulting firm. Uh, my background is in public relations and marketing. Okay. And did that for a little while um, and then kind of started our first couple years of marriage. Um, and then there's a little bit of a backstory yeah. that goes into um, the time that we met after college and what those first few years looked like. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, so you, P, this PR company, tell me a little bit about, about that. PR, you come out of tech, you're like, I want to start a company. Let's sure, go. Sure, Did you work for anybody before? Yes, I had worked for a big firm in Dallas called uh, Weber Shandwick, and then I had done some consulting for a little, a few boutique firms and stuff, and um, I decided to kind of just put my own together. Yeah. I actually had a lot of real estate uh, clients at the time yeah. doing social media management and um, events and, and some of that stuff. Uh, but like I, I said, we can dig into my backstory a little bit. And absolutely. We'll Let's about, go dive right yeah, in. So tell so, me a little bit of the backstory. Yes. Yeah. So I grew up here in San Antonio. Um, our, you know, our upbringing was rooted in faith, family, and friendships is yeah. what I'll say. Um, had a great upbringing. I have, I'm the oldest of three. I have a younger, uh, younger sister, younger brother. And, um, we spent summers down in Rockport, okay. uh, fall and winter up in, uh, Frederick, outside Fredericksburg, uh, Willow city, Texas, where yeah. the family ranch was. And yeah. on my mom's side, there's 23 grandchildren. So it wow. was cousin central. Yeah. Wow. We just had all these built in best friends and, um, it was great, you yeah. know, growing up was great. Um, but as I got into high school, I started to struggle 
with a lot of things that young girls Mm. struggle with. And back in the early 2000s, it wasn't talked about really like it is today. So specifically um, an eating disorder um, that spanned for several years, you know, my nature is I'm a perfectionist. And so having control over those things, you know, I went to uh, a toxic route, so to speak. Mm. Um, Going into later in high school and stuff, you know, drinking and partying and bad choices in relationships with guys. And um, into college, I had tried um, Adderall for the first time. What year was this? This was my sophomore year of college. This was 2003. Okay, yep. And when I tried it, it was like the lights came on. Mm. Like, this is it. I have arrived this is this is my new obsession. Now I I was told that uh, Adderall was almost like if you were struggling with attention deficit, sure. right? Yeah. Was that kind of the 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 big play for a lot of you know is, you know, is that yeah. like hey take this if you're struggling to concentrate if you're struggling to have it it was kind of like you know they would prescribe it in some situations for young adults. Is this correct? Correct. So that's exactly what it was designed for. It is mm. a um, an ADHD, ADD drug. Okay. And if you qualify for that and you really need it, yeah. it affects you in the way that it should. Ah. For a, no- a normal person like me who does not have ADD or ADHD, it uh, it's a stimulant, basically. Okay. So I had focus. I wasn't hungry, so I didn't have to worry about the eating disorder food side of things. Mm. I was able to tackle all these chores I had put off for days. Study. That was the college allure yeah. is this is what you take to study. Yeah. And the first time I tried it, I kid you not, I was texting people that same day. Hey, do you know anybody that has this? Do you know anybody that has that? Yeah. I'll pay whatever they want, you know? Yeah. And there started a decade over a decade long addiction to Adderall. And if I couldn't get that, I do street drugs. It was whatever I could get to, to get that same effect. Yeah. So to talk about the effect, like, cause I've, I've heard about it, but talk about, is it, do you feel like energetic? Do you feel like, does it make your, is it, is it, is it a focused thing? What is it exactly? For again, for somebody who doesn't need it, it jacks you up. And you Mm. can, you feel like you can conquer the world. Mm. That would be pretty dangerous. It would be dangerous. I could see that being pretty dangerous. Now, if you did have a ADHD, if you did have a lack of focus, it wouldn't have the same effect. So ironic thing, and we'll get to this later in my story. uh, My seven-year-old daughter has ADHD. Okay. And the medication that she is prescribed every day is Adderall. Oh, interesting. Yes. Um, and so for somebody who needs it, it slows their brain down because oh, wow. she's already kind of, you know, easily overstimulated, has so many thoughts going at one time. Yeah. It slows things down and allows her to focus in the way that the drug was designed. So it's the opposite of if somebody, you know, if they're having trouble, it will slow down instead of speed up. Sure. That's really interesting. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that started a over decade long addiction. I still drank. I'd yeah. always drank to get drunk. Yeah. The Adderall, I felt like I could drink longer, stay up later. Yeah. And I wasn't drunk when really I still was. Yeah. Um, my, uh, the, the demand for my need only grew. Mm. And so. In terms that, of the amount. Sure. That one pill I was taking, that wasn't cutting it. So now we're going to move up to two, to three, to four, to five. For the whole day or this across the whole part of the day? For the entire day. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Gotcha. That is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't have very much experience with Adderall. I've heard that even today it's still extremely addicted and a lot of people are using it. Right. So so after college, um, I started my first real job. And I went to my doctor. I knew just what to say to get a prescription. I ticked all the way up to the highest amount. But again, the supply did not meet my body's demand. So I would supplement. I would buy from friends. I I would do whatever I could to get what I needed. And, um, And what if, like, so tell me about a day. Sure. 
you go to work mm-hmm. and you don't have it. Well, tell me about I, one of those days. If I go into work, yeah, because a lot of times I would just call in sick. Oh, because it was that bad. Well, it was just I had no energy, I had no drive. I, I just I'd rather just like <sighs> sleep the whole day and and if I did go in, I was super unproductive and mm. just constantly thinking about when am I going to get my next fix? Yeah. Where am I going to get it? How much do I need to fork over? What pharmacy am I going to go to this time? Because yeah. I'd have to pharmacy shop because it's a controlled substance. And yeah. the mental obsession was all over me. Yeah. And I didn't like it, but I couldn't stop. Yeah. Well, how are you going to stop? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point did any way along the way did anybody at work notice? Did they know? Early on, no. Nobody knew. Um, what about in college? What about before that in college? Well, college, everybody did. Everybody, okay. It was, you know, even drinking. Like, I drank to get drunk. Yeah. So did. Everybody, you know, yeah. Now, in high school and college, you're not, I don't know that many kids are particularly called a responsible drinker. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like, it's hard yeah. to tell. Um do you have a problem Yes. or is this just normal college behavior? And right. that's a lot easier to trend towards than, than the latter. So um, when I worked in Dallas, it was for a PR firm. I was okay. super excited. It was during the recession. I was an intern. So it's 2000. This is 2009. Nine? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 2009. Very demanding. You know, PR is 24 seven. The yep. news never sleeps. They yep. say. Um, so my, my, uh, I increased. So, five in the morning to yeah. jack me up. So and you had to get up at five to start or? No, I would take five. Oh, you take- I would take five Adderall. At one time? Yes. So we're talking like 140, 150 milligrams in the morning, which is a lot. Um, I ended up starting to have panic attacks. I ended Later. up in the, in the, hot, the emergency oh. room one day. Um, they gave me the class of drug that will knock all that out. And yeah. I Is, was it was it a, a, is a benzodiazepine? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I'm like, surely all the Adderall I'm taking that had nothing to do with this. Yeah, and so I felt okay the next morning. And guess what I did? Uh, yeah, I took it. Yeah. I'm like, that was just a one time thing. That's not going to happen again. Yeah, and guess what happened? Another panic attack. Another panic attack. Oh. So then I'm getting prescribed these benzodiazepines. Which is really rough to get off of those. Yeah. So really then rough. I'm a human chemistry experiment at that yeah. point. I'm taking a bunch of Adderall in the morning to jack myself up. Yeah. And then I need to put that Xanax inside me at 4.30, 5 o'clock. In order to come down. So I can bring myself back down. Could you sleep? Well, what was sleep like during this time? So sleep was great if I had enough Xanax on hand. Oh, my gosh. If I ran out of uh, of the benzos. Yeah. The power of those panic attacks were so paralyzing that I felt like I was going to have a heart attack and die. Holy cow. It was miserable. Do you, so do you think this is part of the body basically going like we cannot sustain this amount of Adderall yes. and like we've got to do something? Was yeah. that kind of like what, what you think brought those panic attacks on? For sure. But yeah. my addiction was not going to let me believe Oh, that that was yeah. the source. Yeah. You know, my, you just, you just my, see, I need to take this to counteract this. Yeah. yeah. And my just keep addiction going. is going to say, you need more Xanax. Yeah. You need more adamant. You need something that is going to fix this over here yeah. and make you feel better because mm. all of a sudden I have to change the way I feel. There's something in here that is void yeah. that uh, I'm not able to handle life on life's terms. Yeah. And my addiction made me believe that, well, if you don't have this, you can't do this. Mm. If you don't have Adderall, don't even bother going into work. Mm. You're going to hate it. All you're going to think about all day is, when am I going to get Adderall? I can't do anything without it. And then if I ran out of Xanax, again. Now you can't sleep. Well, not only not sleep, but the physical pain, um, angst, I would call my mom in the middle of the night and just ask her to stay on the phone with me until if I wow. see if I could even fall asleep. Wow. It was they were that bad. So did this happen in high school? I mean in college? Did the, the did you have any of the panic no. attacks? That didn't start until uh, later. That started when I was uh, working in Dallas. Mm. I started losing jobs and then uh Did they know? Did the 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 did the office kind of figure it out after a while? I would say my boyfriend at the time, um, 
people were catching on to something is off. Yeah. Yeah. But, because you didn't talk about it. This is not oh, something no, you no, probably, no. no one really knew. This is my secret over yeah. here. Yeah. And my excuse is, well, I have a prescription for these things. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but, oh, I'm just like physically, I'm in so much pain. Like I have to have this. But yeah. nobody knew to the extent that, mm. you know, I find a drug dealer who lives in Houston. And so now I'm getting drugs through the mail. So now I'm committing wow. a felony. So now I'm willing to go to any lengths yeah. to get what I need to make me feel better. Right. Um, right. One evening um, I was sitting at my apartment and I, my husband and I, we didn't live, my boyfriend and I at the time, we didn't live together. Yeah. And so some days we would go without seeing each other because we both worked and you're tired. And I felt really weird. And I called him and I was like, hey, will you just come over and sit with me? And, you know, I had used the excuse all the time. I don't feel good or yeah. I just feel weird, blah, blah, blah. Everybody got so tired of hearing it. Yeah. And reluctantly he came. And had he not, I don't know that I'd be sitting in this chair today. I was sitting there and he said mm. all of a sudden I just looked at him and I'm on the floor having a grand mal seizure. Oh. And he calls, you know. 911, they come, they take me to the emergency room. We're waiting for a room, and boom, I haven't sitting, I'm sitting there and I have another one. Had another one. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. So, had you ever had one before? No. At the, no. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was getting chills thinking, I can't imagine um, just, I mean, obviously, God was intervening in Definitely. that moment that He was there, right? Like, God was, <laughs> yeah, because you're right. If you're, He's not there, there's so many things that could go wrong. Okay. So, did the doctors kind of have an idea at that point? So, and they start doing blood work and they start doing everything. Um, it's more questions yeah. at the time, you know, and they see what I'm prescribed and we're getting off of all that. And now we're going to go see the neurologist, you know, yeah. weekly. We're going to try to get down to the root of some of this stuff. Yeah. I believe, and a lot of us do that um, if you don't uh, detox off of certain drugs properly, that can be a result. Yeah. And I, I'm telling you, the amount of times that I blacked out, I don't even remember if I ran out of Xanax, mm. but I believe that those were caused by a withdrawal mm. um, from that because benzos are a class where yeah. if you don't detox properly, um, that that's what happens. And I will tell you, um, f leading up to that and even after the fact, um, you would think that that would make me go, golly, I should probably stop doing this. Yeah. But I couldn't. Yeah. I, so much time goes by that you're like, I can, I'm fine. You know, I can do this. Yeah. Like I got everything reinstated and, and it was through so long, you know, there were so many times that I would just put God on the shelf yeah. and it's like, Hey man, I got this. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then, and then all of a sudden it's those like hail Mary desperate mercy prayers when you're just, you know, I'm in the middle of a panic attack. I'm in the middle of something so excruciating that you're like, God, please, you know, I'm, please make this go away. I'll never yeah. do this. I'll never do that. And it's like, that's not how it works. Yeah. 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 So did they, so, so did the, the doctors did, they still at that point, your, your boyfriend at the time, he didn't know. And then the doctors didn't know at that point. Really? Nobody knew again to the extent okay. because as addicts and alcoholics, we got to keep, these secrets yeah. close to the vest. Like, yeah. and that's what keep us sick. Secrets keep us sick. Yeah, um, for sure. So this is 2011 and somehow in 2012, I will never understand why, but that boyfriend proposed. Yeah. Um, and became my fiance. <laughs> why do you say it like that? I, cause I was a hot mess express. Yeah. Um, another, you know, God intervening yeah. because, he would a couple of years later go on to to truly save my life. Yeah. So um, this behavior continued, you know, into 2015, and in the spring of 2015, uh, his name's Stephen. He yeah. intercepted my last pill package that for came the in last the mail? time. Yeah, my drugs that came in the mail, and he did, but he didn't know. He just found it. Well, he found it. Yeah. That wasn't the first time he had found okay. one, but. Again, as addicts, we are master manipulator, charmer, salespeople. You know, I was able to weasel my way out of stuff. And yeah. again, oh, that was a mistake. Like, I don't know. You know, we come mm. up with every excuse in the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he said, 
he flushed him down the toilet and said, yeah. that's it. He packed a bag. He left. And since I'm super normal, I text my drug dealer and I'm told him, oh, you just flushed him. Can you send me some more? Wow. You know? Yeah, 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 it's yeah, It's like yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. begging him not to leave, but he's going to leave anyways. And yeah. so, you yeah. know, what's the point? Right, right, um, right, right, right. The next day I'm sitting at my house and I look out the window and I see Stephen, my sister, and my parents walking up the steps. Oh. And I said probably a really bad word out loud yeah. and uh th i knew the jig was up and yeah. they came in and said you got two options yeah. everything you see in front of you is either gone or you go pack a bag and you're gonna go spend 90 days we're gonna go to detox spend 90 days in rehab yeah and the first question i have is well can i at least drink after this yeah i'll stop doing the pills and they're like go pack your freaking bag yeah like, so I spent a week in detox um, and then I went to a treatment facility where I would unknowingly spend the next four months. Oh, wow. What do you mean unknowingly? You didn't know you would be there that long or? No, no, no. Because, or, you know, they pitch it as it's a 90 day program. Oh, And within yes. a few days, the girls are like, oh, well, you know that most people here get a fourth month, right? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, 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 this yeah. This was yeah, yeah. not disclosed. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm going to, you know, fight the fight to make yeah. sure that that doesn't happen. Um, yeah. So what would you say, I, I mean, just because we're, I, I think this is so good. And and I, I Lisa, I really appreciate your openness with mm -hmm. this because obviously this is not, this is not an easy story to tell, right? right? Uh, but I, I, I think God has given you this story to tell for a reason yes. because somebody listening to this is struggling right now. They are, right. they are in the middle of addiction and they may be listening to this and going, well, that, yeah, okay, great. She went, she went through it. Okay, great, great. And she got help. Okay, yeah. great. But I don't need help. Right. What would you tell them? Well, I'd say take a good hard look at what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I fought against the fact that I was an addict in treatment for six weeks because my addiction, my use didn't look like everybody else's. Well, I'm not shooting heroin in my veins. You know, these are legal drugs. I had a prescription for them. I'm this white collar, you know, addict over here. Um, I've never been homeless. I'm not, you know, this isn't court mandated. You know, mm. I separated myself. I looked at all the differences from the similarities. And yeah. so here you ask yourself, well, do normal people take... 150 milligrams of Adderall in the morning. Yeah. Do normal people get drugs through the mail? Do normal people spend thousands upon thousands of dollars for drugs or alcohol? Do normal people get in a fender bender once a month, lose jobs? I mean, you just start stacking things on top and go, Yeah. I don't know if that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all good questions. Right. To kind of like really challenge yourself to see. So, that first week of detox, I would imagine, you know, obviously you get, I think for anybody that's thinking about, oh, I need, I need, I need a, I need a change. I need mm -hmm. to stop. And that first week has to be of all of them. That has yeah. to be one of the worst. I would imagine. It was uh, brutal towards the end at the yeah. first few days. I was still able to get whatever I could to yeah. uh, make sure that I didn't go into a severe withdrawal. Yeah. So I would just sleep through the whole thing and, yeah. you know, was very resistant. And then as I'm starting to come out of the fog, realize what's really about to happen. Yeah. You know, um, I'm about to really get in deep, um, doing some, doing some hard work. And was, so when, so after that week ends, that's you were already starting, you were already away from the house. You were in a yeah. treatment facility yeah. where you stayed 24 seven. Yes. Where you weren't going home or anything of oh, that no, nature. No, no. no, you're saying, okay. Yeah, was my, this local? Was it anywhere in it the It was city? outside of Austin. And uh, my best friend and I like to say that we were kidnapped and thrown in jail without mm. the key. Mm. And truly, uh, my personality, that's what I needed. Yeah. You know, this yeah. wasn't, I didn't volunteer to go do this. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a thief in the night. Go yeah. pack your bag and this is where we're going. And a lot of times that's the best route because then there's not a, a lot of wiggle room and time to say, to talk yourself and to talk your loved ones out of it. So. Right. Cause I, I would imagine at that point you'd become 
pretty adept to you know, figure out a way to, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I'm okay, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. And you'd figure out that way. Okay, so you go, you're go, you going through treatment and then when, you said it took six weeks to admit it. Well, yeah, and six, and in six weeks, I found out I'm getting that fourth month. Oh, yeah. and by the way, you're going to sober living yeah. in yeah. Austin for three months after. And I was furious i was crying my husband doesn't love me i'm playing mm. the victim again you know they this is ridiculous like uh mm. but that was the turning point for me because again it was like the jig is up like yeah. all this journaling god please don't give me a, a fourth month you know i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna tell these people what they want to hear i'm gonna you know go through the motions mm -hmm. i finally was able to just do the work. Mm. And so when you say do the work, mm -hmm. I think that's important because I've heard that before. My, my, a buddy of mine, Johnny, shout out to Johnny Morris. He runs a sober uh, uh -huh. living uh, house. He has two of them. And I've heard him say that you got to do the work. Right. And when you say that, um, it, I think it's good to explain that to someone that may be in that situation of addiction right now. What does that mean? Obviously, they have to be willing to put themselves in a place where they know they need to change. But sure. then it's like, okay, now let's do the work. Right. Talk about um, that. Well, it can mean different things. But for me, it was like, get out of your own way mm -hmm. and start listening to the suggestions of others. Mm -hmm. um, where I was specifically, we went through the 12 steps. Mm -hmm. So it was also like, stop going through the motions and like, let's actually dig into some of this stuff mm -hmm. and just let go. Yeah. I went in a shell of myself, a skeleton, just like no color, black eyes, just, you know, like literally a shell. Mm. And it took a full month where um, one, of my, one of my best friends came in mm. and we would go to a meeting. We're on the bus mm -hmm. and there's no talking. You know, I mean, this place was strict. It was boot camp. It was no messing around. Yeah. And we're coming back and she's telling me this story. And I laughed, like belly laughed out loud. And everybody turned and looked like, is that Weasel? Yeah. She has barely spoken a word in the entire month that she's been here. Yeah. And it was all of a sudden, like I started to come alive again. Hmm. Is this is this where you felt like you 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 had finally gotten so far away from the the chemical reactions of the Adderall, the chemical reaction of everything that you were taking to where you can almost start to sense the world around you in a natural way, little in a by, natural state? Yeah, little by little, um, you know, it's definitely not overnight. And yeah. I had put so many years into so many unhealthy behaviors that there were a lot of layers to peel back and a yeah. lot of time to really start to dig in. Mm -hmm. um, but all of a sudden I'm given the tools to figure out how to cope and deal without substances mm. to rely on. And it's relying on, you know, a higher power, which for me is God yeah. um, and referring back to, the steps and the things that I've been taught. And yeah. what I will say is the, a lot of these treatment centers, there is a recipe that they have come up with to know what works. Mm. And so I fought against it for so long and looking yeah. back now, I'm like, well, they know, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. You know, being able to take suggestions. I went home at the end of 2015 and I will tell you that that first year of sobriety is excruciating. Okay. It is tough. It is, I felt like a newborn, you know, trying yeah. to figure out who I am as a sober person, mm -hmm. going through all those firsts, first time being sober at a wedding, at New Year's, at a party for this, it, and just yeah. so uncomfortable in my skin, in my own skin, yeah. really. So yeah. it's like, it because everything that I would, use to make myself feel comfortable has yeah. it's gone yeah yeah and so what was that so how did you cope what what was what was what held you to that sobriety because obviously that it's not easy it's not easy you know yeah and I, you know i am around alcohol uh, my husband drinks family friends mm. and um 
not that wasn't necessarily my first drug of choice, mm -hmm. but it was still something that I did all the time. Right. Um, you know, counseling, uh, continuing to go to meetings, um, having a sober coach to work with, and then yeah. ultimately motherhood. Okay, so let's talk. So when when did you have your first child? At what what year? So I um I we got pregnant with Sawyer yeah. in June of 2016. So okay, I had after. been home. Yes. I had been home about six months at the time, and okay. um I will tell you that um first of all I loved pregnancy. Yeah, I am one of those weirdos yeah. that like I just loved the way I it felt, just the yeah. whole process. Yeah. I even like birthing children. I yeah. think it's like, yeah. you know, you just feel like this rock star. Like this is just powerful stuff. It's superhuman. Stuff. It's superhuman. Yeah, it's superhuman. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, yes. I'm a freak in that regard. I love totally. it. Yeah. Um, but I found it. I found my purpose. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's really, that's, that's really, really cool. So coming, so you were almost, a, when your first child was born, were you a year, almost a year sober? I was over a year. Over a year. Yes. Okay. She and the, you know, God's irony as well. My first Mother's Day was actually my sober birthday. No for my way. two years sober. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that was that was cool. And we ended up having our second Piper in uh July of twenty eighteen. Okay. And then our third daughter, Charlie, was born in September twenty twenty one. Okay. Um Yay, and will, COVID. COVID baby. Yes, yeah, she wasn't. <laughs> I actually had COVID no way. when uh, you know. Um So could anybody is this during the time where nobody could come in there? Was this Yeah, but is, it was kinda nice. Yeah. With it being your third, like yeah. you already knew kind of what to do. And okay. what I will say though is what a blessing that my my children will never know who I was prior to getting sober. And that is, yeah. But the relationship with my husband, that was not an easy road to navigate for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Not only are we having to kind of get to know each other again is like, you know, me being this sober person, but then going into parenting for yeah. the first time, challenges upon challenges. Yeah. And um it's not an easy road had for couples who don't go through some of the things that we right. went through. Right. Um, but I, I can honestly say I will be nine years sober in May. And for the longest time, I longed to get back to that 15 year old girl Yeah. before all the, the madness started. Mm. And at 39 years old, I found her. Yeah. I Isn't that beautiful? Found her. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And how many people right now are in that uh, space where they, they want to get back, they want to go back to the person they were before, you know? Yeah. Um, but they, they don't have hope. They don't have hope. They don't have anybody like your husband, Steven. Yes. They don't have anybody like Steven that just says, okay, it's over. Yep. Right. Like let's, let's go. Yep. Um, which is uh, a shout out to Steven because yeah. that's a, you know, for him to, to, uh, stand by and want to see you get the help you needed. And then look at, now you look at the beauty of the book that's written yes. and the three children that you have now. It's like, that may not have happened had you not said, okay, I'll try, you know, because I'm sure there were parts of you that were like, I'm not going. For sure. In the For beginning. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so we'll get to this, this book right here because this book is probably the reason you and I are sitting here talking yeah, today. So, for sure. um, after our third daughter, Charlie was born, uh, my mom was over helping, you know, often with the newborn stage and she would mention what a good dad St my husband Stephen yeah. is and that he reminds her of my dad and how he is with mm. my sister and I, my brother and I. And she said, he's just such a good girl, dad. Mm. You know, you need to do something for him. You write something, call it the girl dad, you know, we'll yeah. just put it together. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. I have a two month old over here. Let me just find mm. some time to, to work on this. And one night he was gone and I was just sitting on the couch watching TV and I started thinking about things and I started typing everything in my phone. And as yeah. I wrote the text, I knew I had actual photos of him doing those activities Each with, one of them. with our girls yeah. or uh, a memory of me and my dad. Yeah. And so I put it together as a photo book, gave it to him for Christmas. Tears were shed. Yeah. Everybody loved it. I got with an illustrator and this is what we have 
today. And what year was this so that, that the first one was printed? The first one was printed in 2022. Okay. Um, yeah. And from the jump, I wanted to, well, I, you know, I asked the opinion of my website girl and, and others. I said, I want to, sh- I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. Yeah. I'd like to include it in there somewhere, but yeah. let me know your thoughts. Yeah. And everybody was pretty blown away by it. Yeah. And, and my goal in all of that was to say that what you see on these pages, this, our life is not some shiny, perfect fairy tale. Yeah. I want to be real and relatable and raw with people of like, this is the beauty of the blessings that have come from mm-hmm. some extreme struggle and sacrifice, yeah. you know, um, this is real life stuff yeah. that we've been through. Yeah. And um, so the funniest thing is this book is not only bringing joy to families when they read it. And I've had grown men come up to me crying because they sat down with their grown daughters and just went down memory lane and just how much joy it's bringing their family. Yep. But it's also serving as this vessel and a catalyst for me to get out and share my story Mm. in a way that I never have. Yeah. And this isn't something I've been ashamed to talk about, but I'm not going to like go to dinner with some friends and be like, all right, guys, settle in. You ready for this? Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 for um, sure. I'm happy to talk about it, but I definitely don't ever want to force anything on anyone or make yeah. anybody feel uncomfortable. And um, so we have this really cool book and Very more, cool. more to come and – my goal and my hope is that if any part of my story can inspire somebody else, Mm -hmm. cool. You know, like this is, there's some really cool stuff out there and there, and God really works some miracles and, and uses parts of our life and, and things in different ways. And yeah, so it's, it's cool to see. I'm kind of just riding this wave right now and I love it. I, I I'm curious though, because I I've always heard that when when someone goes through this idea of, of addiction, there's there's kind of like a replacement, right? Like mm-hmm. you you find something to plug into that space of what the the um, maybe the Adderall or maybe the 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 uh, the other um, uh, what was the other one um, Xanax. And you, you, you say, okay, I've got to replace it with something. You know right. what I mean? And where along the lines did you find that replacement of what kind of locked in there to give you the ability to go, I don't need this anymore? Well, again, recovery looks different for everybody. Mm-hmm. And everybody does what works best for them. I think time, really, and kind of navigating through life like exercise has always been something that's important to me Mm -hmm. again motherhood was something new that came in and um really trying to be a little more gentle on myself Mm. um you kind of gain this perspective after going through something like this that um this isn't you know you can't go to school for this. I went to the school of hard knocks to, right. to kind of figure some of this out. So yeah. I don't know that there was a lot of, uh, where one specific replacement, um, it was kind of just trying to figure out in these different areas of my life, um, what works and, and what doesn't. Mm. And again, it takes, it takes time. Um, so I will say though, that, Again, going back to the recipe that a lot of these facilities have, there is some serious armor of God on me because, as I mentioned earlier on, Mm -hmm. my seven-year-old takes the very drug that I was addicted to for 15 years Mm -hmm. every morning. And you see it. And guess who's in charge of the prescription, Mm -hmm. puts it in her hand every morning, and hands it to her. Mm without even a thought Mm. that is a miracle i didn't even think about that Mm -hmm. yeah when you said that earlier wow wow and apparently adhd and that kind of stuff is genetic yeah we don't have it in our family yeah so again god's like here you go yeah what are you gonna do with this wow 
That's so that that's powerful. Yeah. Well, that just I mean, again, it just shows that when we when we do the work, as you mentioned earlier, if we're willing to do the work, m- massive miracles can happen sure. and people can change. Right. In a massive way beyond probably what you thought was possible. I I would imagine when you stepped into that first day and if you were to look if you were to be able to see into the future to see where you're at right now sitting here with this book, three children and your husband been married now for how long? It'll be 11 years in June. 11 years in June. When you walked in that facility, did you see this even as a possibility of a future? Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. And that's I remember sitting in meetings and people talking about my life, these things happen like that I could have never dreamed of. And I remember sitting there going like, well, that sounds cool, but is that real? Like, can that actually really happen? And, and it is. And the other thing I want to get across too is I'm never fully recovered. Mm. This is a lifelong journey and life is still super messy and I am not perfect. And that's just the way God wants me. And there's freedom in that. Yeah. And I don't have anything figured out. You know, this is, I'm still living life on life's terms. And, Mm. um, so, you know, it's, there will always be challenges and, Mm -hmm. um, and things to go through along the way. And, I, I believe that's the way God designed it. Yeah. And fortunately for me, I was able to learn some really hard lessons early on in life to yeah. where I still have the the better part of my life to live not miserable like I was. Yeah. And and fortunate that uh, that you survived all of those Absolutely. you know you know situations, yeah. right? That, right. That from the seizures and whatnot. Um there's a there's a mom listening right now. I would imagine there's maybe a mom, there's a dad or there's somebody that's listening. Maybe they're single and they're they're in the storm. Right. They're in the storm. They they know that something has to change because I, I I would imagine in there were moments where you knew things had to change. Right. Right. When you were in college, when you were, you know, in Dallas and, and you know, with the PR firms and losing jobs. I would imagine there was there were moments of where you knew that you needed to change. So if you could speak to uh, speak, maybe something of encouragement to them, what would you say? I would say bring the darkness out into the light. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, secrets keep us sick. And there is a power in being vulnerable and saying things out loud because then they lose their power. Mm -hmm. It is okay to not be okay. Yeah. And to say, I feel like I'm dying inside right now. I am miserable. And this is what I'm doing. And I don't like it. And I want to change, but I don't know how. I don't oh, know what I'm doing. That's powerful. I'm actually, uh, I have helped some friends and family along the way, which is part of, mm. you know, this program. We are uniquely qualified to help somebody else in need. Yeah. And um, through this book, I have had grown men. I had a complete stranger send me a Facebook message after a um, TV appearance saying, mm. I just bought your book for my six foot nine rugged girl dad. Mm. And I loved what you said. And I'm, I'll have seven years in July, wow. whatever, you know, it's just, you, you don't have to live like this, Yeah, you know, and it's hard and that's okay. And, um, again, there is freedom in imperfection. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, that, that's probably, uh, that secrets keep us sick. Like that will, that will remain as something that even that I would want to talk with my son about. Definitely. Right? Like just that idea if 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 you, you know, secrets when you when you keep them and you hold on to them, they 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 will make you sick. Yeah. And It'll you got to bring alive. it out. So bring the darkness to the light is kind of the the idea, right? I love that. I, that's so powerful. And so how can people get this amazing book? What's the best way for people to order uh, uh, the Girl Dad. How can they get it, Liesl? Go to thegirldadbook.com. Okay. Click buy now. Buy now. And buy now. Add it to your yes. cart. Yes. And um, I will send you a signed copy. Oh, that's cool. They make a great gift for a dad of 
one girl, all girls or a daughter to give to her father Yeah, with Father's Day coming up. Um, yes. And really, it's kind of an evergreen gift with baby showers. You know, just yeah. think of somebody um, that you think it would bring some joy to. 100%. It rhymes. It's easy to get through. So yeah. it's not one of those books you open and there's a, you know, yes. half page long paragraph when you're trying to sit down and read to the kiddos. So right. it's fun for um, for adults and kiddos. Now, the process to get here, right? To get to a physical, I, I, I would imagine this process was not easy. No, it is not for the faint of heart. Again, <laughs> this whole thing was a total accident. Yeah. Um, but... I tried to navigate this as best I could. Writing and illustrating it, that's the easy fun part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I self-publish, I basically had to teach myself everything mm. about navigating that world yeah. and pricing and printing and all the all the technical, yeah. not so it's fun no, it's, stuff. It's no fun. It is yeah. no fun. Yeah. Um, and the I made so many mistakes along the way. Yeah. I mean, just money's flying out the door because I'm flying blind. I've never done this before. Yeah. Um, but I was always persistent on trying to find others in the industry who yeah. could offer me some insight and knowledge. And I, I feel like I finally got connected with some of those people yeah. in, within the last um, nine months, one of them being your lovely wife, yeah, Christina Martinez. She's awesome. We'll give her a shout out. Yeah. Um, and others. And um, this second edition copy is a labor of love and yeah. um, it's a really cool gift for people. It's so. a great gift. Great gifts. If you've got a dad out there that's about to have a little girl, this is the book that you need to get them. You need to yes. get them. So wrapping up, I, 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 how did you and Christina meet? I don't, how do I not know that story? Uh, you know, it's a whole God thing Yeah, um, through a mutual friend. And then I've joined this uh, committee for oh, a super cool event golf, happening in yes, May. Yes. Um, all you golfers out there need to check out the Super Bowl of golf. Um, if you want to come play with a NF retired NFL player and yes. raise some money for some local charities, it's a great event. Um, so I got, you know, just through the grapevine and then yeah. here we are and now we're doing this and uh, and now you and I are sitting here and it's just yes. funny the way God works and make, and, you know, San Antonio is the biggest small town yes, it is. out there. So, um, so it's been fun. And for me to just be open of let's meet this person, let, you know, get, getting myself out there and yeah. you just never know where an opportunity lies or a really cool relationship. No, uh, for sure. For sure. The golf tournament is going to be a lot of fun. We did it last year. It's at TPC on the Oaks course. Yeah. It's a blast. Right. Were you, were you part of it last year? I actually was not. You're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, so much fun. Uh, May 6th. It's May a tournament, right? May 6th. Yeah. Yes. It's on a Monday. And, uh, if you, if you haven't gotten a team, get a team now. It's a great opportunity to play at TPC. And as Alicia was saying, you get a uh, NFL football player. I yeah. mean, how cool is that? Yeah. You know, an ex NFL football player. Uh, so, well, Lisa, Lisa, thank you so much for sharing your story. I, I, I there's so much here to unpack that people, how could they best reach out to you? If someone's like, I just need somebody to talk to. What would be a way that the, the Instagram, is there a way that they could reach out via Instagram? Yeah, I have a personal Instagram account and then the Girl Dad book is my you know business account. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a, I am an open book and I am here to, you know, reveal anything that could be of use or help to somebody else. So um, reach out and we can exchange contact information and um, and yeah. That's that's it. Well, I'm sure there's going to be somebody that's going to reach out that it that may need that may need to bring something from darkness to light that may need to that that is just literally going to say, hey, I, I've been living with this secret and it's keeping me sick. And right. I and that is so powerful. And I will keep that will resonate me forever. I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. You know, I never heard that before. So that will resonate. Thank you so much for being on TM3 Impact. Again, if you want to see this amazing book, you want to go to The Girl Dad. TheGirlDadBook.com. And we've got something for you mamas coming out later this spring. Oh, yay. So stay tuned. Okay, yes. awesome. Another yeah. book that's coming out for moms. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Stay tuned. Make sure you go. And we'll have links to the uh, uh, to the website on this. Uh, this will be on YouTube. Thanks. This is going to be on um, uh our 
I, Apple iTunes and Spotify. So super excited to Amazing. have you on the show. Thank you so much for yes, being here. Thank you for having me. All righty. Take care. Thanks.